Is Nigeria's oil a blessing or a catastrophe? From tackling resilient illegal oil refinery workers to finding solutions to a long-standing fuel subsidy problem, Nigeria has a lot of work to do in its oil sector. Are the promises and interventions of a newly elected president enough to create an overhaul in the oil industry? I'm going to answer these questions and a lot more. Let's delve right in. Nigeria has been struggling with attracting foreign investment into the oil industry for a while now. Buhari had no choice but to outsource the Nigeria's national oil company which was state-owned. Let's put this into perspective. Nigeria has been producing less oil than its OPEC quota. The reason for this is that 10% of oil produced in Nigeria goes missing, in other words, stolen. Now 10% is a large chunk of the oil resource. But in case you disagree with me, let's assess the monetary value of that percentage. For just the first quarter of 2022, the crude oil stolen from the reserves of the country equates to about $1 billion. The stolen oil is said to be the major source of recreation and revenue of a thriving illegal refinery business. The business has been thriving but it has been marred with several deaths caused by explosions. There have been reports of explosions and deaths during different times but the workers of illegal oil refineries must be a set of resilient individuals just like the Galamse miners in Ghana. Despite the explosions and deaths in the refineries, these workers bounce back to set up the business as if nothing had happened. The root cause of this is unemployment. The rate of unemployment has been increasing steadily since 1993 and it's at an all-time high. In March 2023, there was yet another explosion near the Niger Delta region, the region with the largest oil reserves in Nigeria. According to official police reports, the explosion led to at least 12 deaths. The victims were busy channeling crude oil from a pipeline which has been particularly targeted by illegal oil refinery operators when the explosion happened. But illegal oil refinery is not the only problem in the oil industry. It's just one part of a complex system keeping Nigeria down. Let's turn to another interesting development. Fuel subsidies were formalized during the Olisigon Obasanjo military regime in 1977. An act known as the Price Control Act was passed by the then government to regulate the prices of items like fuel prices. After Obasanjo left power, subsequent administrations have attempted to eliminate the subsidies placed on fuel in particular. But all of such attempts have been met with an uproar and intense opposition from Nigeria. A large number of Nigerians consider the subsidies as one of the few benefits they get from the federal government and as such, they have fought back primarily through protests, opposition, governments and media outlets to ensure that the government maintains fuel subsidies. Due to this, fuel costs have increasingly become a burden on incumbent governments and the rise of inflation has further worsened the situation. In January 2012, President Goodluck Jonathan officially announced the removal of fuel subsidies. Fuel prices increased from 65 Naira, which is equivalent to 14 cents, to 140 Naira, to 30 cents per liter. This gesture sparked an uproar in the country and Nigeria came to a halt. The citizens passionately protested the new policy on the streets. Labor unions, civil society organizations, some media houses and opposition parties were the main forces behind these protests. One of the most prominent opposition leaders who protested good luck Jonathan's decision was Bola Tinibu, 
the sitting president of Nigeria. It is ironic that in less than two months after he was officially sworn in as president, he has announced the removal of fuel subsidies, the same policy he protested against 11 years ago. I will get into Tinubu's decision shortly. After the uproar and protest in 2012, the then government had no choice but to reintroduce the subsidy to create some calm and stability in the country. But after a 200-page parliamentary report revealed a $6 billion fraud involving officials of the National Petroleum Company, Nigerians and some government officials have lost their trust in the subsidy. Many continue to mirror the policy with allegations of corruption and embezzlement. Nigerians are of the opinion that the state-owned National Petroleum Company should be held accountable for every dollar that flows through the company. Former President Buhari's government even claimed that the subsidy only exists on paper and not in empirical terms. The oil industry is relevant to the economy that three of the presidential candidates of the recent elections made the issues one of their proposed policies. They promised to bring positive reformation to the oil sector. One of the core messages from these political leaders was to eliminate the fuel subsidy policy and to bring about an overhaul of the oil sector to benefit the citizenry. The problem Nigerians are facing right now is that a policy that was initially intended to lessen the financial burden on citizens has instead led to a major financial burden on the federal government. Al Jazeera stated that the just-ended Buhari administration left a whooping 77 trillion naira, equivalent to $167 billion in debt to local and foreign creditors. The state coffers were depleted years ago and fuel subsidy has been running on debts which keep accumulating at alarming rates. Tinibu's first weeks as president has, however, been characterized by assuring speeches and some action. Will his interventions be the solution Nigeria has been waiting for? The key message from the Tinubu government has been the need for Nigerians to sacrifice or tighten their belts in order to be prepared for a temporary moment of discomfort, after which the country will start reaping some fruits of economic development and progress. What exactly is Tinubu implying? Tinubu has officially abolished state fuel subsidies and this has sparked a domino effect of a hike in petroleum prices and a resulting increase in transport fares and food prices. Tinubu has a very confident and calm demeanor in the midst of all these. He has assured his citizens that their sacrifice will not be in vain. Tinubu promised Nigerians that they will be repaid through investment in transportation, infrastructural development, educational reforms, reliable and regular power supply, improved healthcare and public utilities. All of these sectors face difficult challenges which need an overhaul. Tinubu is not the first president to make these promises, but time will tell if his words will be backed by action or if they are mere political promises. A removal of the fuel subsidy will not be without opposition and backlash. Organizations like the Nigerian Labor Congress and the Trade Union Congress threaten to go on a strike. The National Industrial Court has however restrained them from embarking on the strike action. But when did we get here? How did Nigeria become one of the top oil producing countries in the world? Nigeria is said to have discovered oil from as far back as 1956. That is about 67 years ago, but it wasn't found by sheer luck. For over 500 years, before 1956, there were countless instances of exploration and disappointment. Experts and even foreigners tried to discover the resource for several years with no results. Until 1956, when a major economic breakthrough was made in Olobiri in the Delta state of Nigeria. This was four years before Nigerians' independence from the British. Nigerians who lived during that era were very excited about the oil discovery because to them, it would lead to an unprecedented growth in the economy and improve their standard of living. Their excitement and participation must have increased when the country gained independence four years later. But in 2023, after over 67 years later, the discovery of oil hasn't reflected on the Nigerian continent and Africa at large. What could have 
gone wrong. The Organization of the Petroleum Export Countries claims that Nigeria has the 10th largest crude oil reserves in the world and the only African country in the top 10 list. Most of the other countries in the top 10 list are well-developed countries like the US, Canada, and Saudi Arabia. Oil played a major role in their development and growth. So why is Nigeria so different? Is the discovery of oil in Nigeria a catastrophe instead of a blessing? When we take a look into the oil producing countries in Africa. The story is like that of Nigeria. The story is an extension of the African situation, a continent so rich in valuable natural resources and potential wealth but wallowing in extreme poverty and underdevelopment. It has even got its own name, the resource curse. Countries like Angola, Gabon, Congo, and Ghana all produce oil in commercial quantities. Yet, you would wonder why these countries remain in their current state even after decades of independence. The days of blaming colonial masters are over. The relevance of history is for us to reflect back on times past and learn from them instead of finding solace in them. History is not to be used as a weapon to blame all our current unfortunate occurrences on the colonialists, but there is hope for Nigeria and Africa as a whole. The president has abolished the subsidies and ordinary Nigerians cannot ignore the price hikes in the country. The mood in Nigeria is therefore pensive but hopeful. During Tinibu's inaugural speech, he said these words to the people of Nigeria. We have stumbled at times, but resilience and diversity have kept us going and we will keep going. I could not agree less. A little peep into Nigeria's history will reveal civil wars, coup d'etat, and unpleasant atrocities. Nigerians continue to prove that they are a people of stubborn resilience. In the face of severe challenges and vices that threatens their progress, Nigerians march on with hope. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more relevant African-related facts and news. Also, hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any video posted. Comment, like, and share. Until next time.